My journey to linking underserved communities to higher dimensions of learning began way before becoming a high school biology teacher. Let me take you back to 2015 when I became a full-time anatomy and physiology professor teaching nursing students. I was thrilled to be pouring into the minds of students that would one day save lives on a daily basis. However, there was a problem. The retention rate of the institution was 50% and less than 3% of those students would pass the examination, the NCLEX, that they needed to practice nursing. So as my colleagues and I gathered in a conference room discussing strategies on how to target this issue, my, one of my colleagues stated, I can set a monkey at a computer and they can outperform those students. Those students. According to the data of the institution, those students consisted of 87% of African-American and Latino students. They looked at like me. So as I scanned the room looking at the faces of my colleagues, their faces didn't resonate that they didn't disagree with the statement or that the statement was racially insensitive. It was more so a look like, what is this lady about to do or say? What they didn't realize was that statement forever changed my life. It was the electricity of a light bulb. It was the catalyst that I needed in order to activate change. So to answer their nonverbal question, what was I about to do? I made up in my mind that I was about to change the game of education and connect the underserved to higher dimensions of learning to neuroscience. So as a scientist, I began to do my research. And what I discovered was that 100% of those students fell into what we call the academic achievement gap. They graduated from high schools or school districts that were underperforming. That meant that they were riddled by low performing standardized testing, low mathematics and science scores and reading scores, and low college completion rates. I then begin to dig deeper and use my foundations of a scientist and my expertise in neuroscience and what I knew about the brain. When we talk about learning, we're talking about the ability to acquire knowledge. But when we take out that neuron or that brain cell and look at it underneath the microscope, what we see what learning is, is the ability of that brain cell to grow and to make neural connections. I had it. We have to translate that into the classroom, the ability for the stu students to intentionally grow and make those brain cells have neural connections. I tested out the theory. I was crazy enough to do it and created a program called iSuccess and it worked. The retention rate went from 50 to 80%, and all of the students that participated in the iSuccess program, 100% of those students passed the NCLEX on the first try. But I knew that was just the beginning of my journey. I knew I had to take that over into secondary schools. So I began to put out my resume into any secondary school that fell into the academic achievement gap. I gathered all of my data and research, developed my philosophy of education, press submit, and boom, nothing happened. It wasn't until months later when I received a phone call from Mama Rose at Imhotep Institute Charter High School inviting me in for an interview. When I arrived at this beautiful institution, I was greeted by African masks and I could hear the drumming like it was summoning me to be here. Everything began to align itself. 
I was greeted formally by Mama Drury, the Chief Academic Operating Officer, and by Baba Andre, who was the Chief Operating Officer of the institution. They begin to tell me that Imhotep is an African center, that means culturally inclusive, and STEM institution. And they were looking to revamp their academic program. They also told me about the libations, of how they pay homage to the ancestors before starting the day, affirmations. It was the perfect Petri dish, however, they too were riddled by standardized testing and they wanted a way to target and solve this problem. So I did what I knew best and I took those same pro principles from the iSuccess program and I applied them into MLTEP. So what did I do? Now, when you think about the greats, I love basketball, so when you think about the greats such as Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, they didn't become great by throwing frisbees all day and then stepping out onto the court and say, hey, we're ready for game time. No, they train themselves on an elite level. So why not do that in the classroom? Starting off the class with allowing to train the brains or the neurons at an elite level. Starting off the class with problems that target logic. Starting off the class with allowing speed brain training to really develop problem solving and critical thinking. In addition to that, giving scholars the ability to breathe and to meditate. When we allow the scholars to breathe, that brings in oxygen to those neurons or those brain cells. And studies have shown that it allows those brain cells to focus and to critically think. All right, so let's test this out. I want you to hold your breath and remember this list of words. Ball, brain, purple, bat, octopus. Okay, you can start breathing again. Now, can you remember these list of words? All right, let's try it again. I want you to breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Now remember this list of words. Ball, brain, purple, bat, octopus. Can you remember those words? Now think about it, which way was easier when you allowed yourself the time to breathe and to let go of that anxiety? Or was it when you were holding your breath? Think about that, what, that's what happens for our students. The second thing that I did was I actually made the information culturally relevant. So instead of just teaching about genetics in the Punnett Square, I allowed them to make a connection. So what I did instead of just teaching about the Punnett Square, I told them about the Hutus and also the Tutsis in the Rwandan genocide and how these group of people, a genocide was created because these group of people were separated based upon their skin complexion, the characteristics of their facial features and their height. The students immediately begin to say, wow, they were separated because of their phenotypes? They got it. Wow, that's kind of like what they did with the house slaves and the field slaves. They got it. Wow, that's like modern day colorism where we're separated just by the color of our skin, not just here in America, but globally worldwide. They got it. When we allow ourselves to breathe life into what they're reading in the textbooks and allow them to culturally make a connection, what minds are we unlocking with this? The last thing that I did was I used the advantage of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, along with inquiry-based learning. So instead of just teaching them about the heart, for example, I put the sheep heart in front of them and I told them that this was a 38 year old African American female and you had only 20 minutes to save her life by inserting a pacemaker into her heart. So after we finished this open heart surgery, not only did they know the anatomy and the physiology of the heart, 
but whatever question, secondary question or question that I asked them that was very similar to standardized testing, they were able to answer and execute. I also allowed them to transform my classroom into a please touch museum filled with photosynthesis and cellular respiration. They had to themselves build trees and you saw oxygen molecules and carbon dioxide flowing into these life-size models of lungs and they made the connection. So am I saying to throw away the foundations and principles of the whiteboard? No, what I'm saying is to add depth to them, add neuroscience-based principles and unlock and cultivate the innate genius within these students that are plagued by or considered to be a part of the academic achievement gap. I'm reminded of the words of Albert Einstein when he said that we treat our children like fish, judging them on their inability to climb a tree also, in the words of the great philosopher Noble Wade, we are treating our children like freshwater fish and throwing them into a salt water environment and expecting them to thrive. So I don't want this to be a feel good message. I want it to activate change. I would like for scholars, educators, administrators, policy changers when it comes to education to think about the power of using neuroscience in the classroom. It worked for me. Not only did we make changes with the iSuccess program, but here at MLTEP, we were able to take the academic performance from zero to 90%. Our standardized testing also increased. So I encourage you all today, let's stand together, united, to promote change in the academic achievement gap by linking the underserved to higher dimensions of learning through neuroscience.